Greetings. Today we're going to talk about certification in holistic nursing, how to prepare, when and where you sit for the examination, and general issues related to preparation for the certification exam. The certification process has multiple steps. The first is meeting the qualification requirements, which include education, license, practice, and a CE requirement. Next is applying. After that, you sit for the exam. And we'll talk a little bit about taking the exam and some logistics related to this issue. And then recertification is every five years. And we will mention that in more detail in a few minutes. First, I want to talk about the general process. This is a journey. It takes its own time. It's important that you take the time that you need to decide this is what you want to do, meet the requirements, and then sit for the exam. Everyone does it in their own time framework. Some people choose to do the entire process in approximately six weeks. Most people take three to six months to prepare and then sit for the exam. So what are the requirements for getting a certification in holistic nursing? Prior to taking the exam, you have to meet the educational requirement. You have to have an unrestricted RN license. You have to meet the practice hour requirement. And then there's a continuing education requirement. I'm going to talk more about these specifically now. The educational level um, is anywhere from an ADN to a PhD or DNP. An ADN and diploma, or having a bachelor's in another field, allows you to sit for the HN-BC exam. If you have a BSN degree, you can sit for the H&B or the HN exam. If you have a graduate degree in nursing, that may be an MSA, it may be an MSN, you are eligible to sit for the Advanced Holistic Nurse or the AHN. You can also choose to sit for a lower level exam, the H&B or the HN-BC. As you're qualified at the higher level, you can choose to sit for any of those exams. Most people choose to sit for the exam at their educational level, but it is not required. The PhD and DNP are also graduate degrees in nursing and allow you to sit for the AHN exam. People who have an advanced practice license, the APR and licensure, may choose to sit for the advanced practice holistic nurse exam. Because they have APR and recognition, and have graduated at the graduate degree in nursing, they can also choose to sit for the HN, the HNB, or the AHN level. So first you have to meet the educational level requirement. Education has to have been acquired at an accredited university. And um, if you ever have questions about that, let us know and we can check with you. But most university websites do note that the program has been accredited and by whom. You must have a current active unrestricted U.S. license. That means that if you're going to be practicing within the United States, you have to have a U.S. RN license that does not have any restrictions on it, any uh, holds or you're on probation, etc. If you choose to sit for the exam and you plan to return to your own country, you may have an RN license from your country. Obviously, if in the future you choose to work or teach in the United States, you will need to have a current active unrestricted RN license. Holistic nursing practice. Holistic nursing practice is not the tasks we do, nor is the population or setting that defines us, but rather it's a way of being. It's the essence of who we are. Holistic nursing is defined by the nurse's philosophy and way of being. So it doesn't matter what population you work with, what your focus of practice is, where your setting is. If you believe that people are greater than the sum of the parts, that we are in a mutually ex exclusive relationship with our client, that it is sacred space, that we need to set intention and have presence, that active listening and communication skills is re essential to relationship-based care. If this is your philosophy, regardless of who you work with or where you work, you are practicing holistic nursing. Holistic nursing practice is required for the um, applying of the exam. 
You have to have 2,000 hours in the last um, five years or one year of full-time practice to meet the practice requirement. Now here are some examples of specialty certification requirements. The, these differences um, are minimal in some ways between the cardiovascular nursing certification and holistic nursing certification. In other ways, um, it is a very big difference because it's a philosophical difference. We both have practice requirements, an unrestricted RN license, um, an educational requirement. But what is different here is how we think about nursing. So for our certification exam, we require 48 CE hours related to holistic nursing philosophy, theory, and research. The national certification examinations are offered by PSI through CNET. CNET manages the application process and will help you get test registered. The examinations are offered year round and once your application has been approved and you have gotten confirmation of application approval, you will be eligible to register for the examination. You have 14 days from confirmation notification to contact PSI. You have a three month testing session that is available to you and examinations are offered throughout the entire year. Once again, the national certification examinations are offered through CNET. So if you have any particular questions for them, please contact them. There are four exams, as noted earlier, the Holistic Nurse Board Certified HN-BC for non-baccalaureate prepared nurses, the Holistic Nurse Baccalaureate Board Certified Examination HNB-BC, the Advanced Holistic Nurse Board Certified AHN-BC for Graduate Prepared Nurses, and the Advanced Practice Holistic Nurse Board Certified Examination, the APHN-BC, which requires that you have APR and licensure. So as you think about preparation, you want to create a study plan that includes the where, when, and how that works best for you. Research has shown lately that studying in different locations helps us process the information better and retain it. So as you think about the where you're going to be studying, think about switching out the locations, the living room, or as you're having a Starbucks outside or um, in the uh, backyard, wherever you want to be that provides you with the best location as you prepare and helps you relax and feel comfortable. Plan accordingly. Listen to your inner wisdom. What works for you? Pace yourself. And remember to work towards balance. Plan ahead. We all know that life happens, and when life happens, it can throw a real wrench in our plans. So plan accordingly. Give yourself enough time. Everyone has a timeline, and the timeline is personal and dependent on you. We suggest you apply when you're ready to take the exam. Once your application has been approved, you will have three months or a three-month window to sit for the test. If you need the testing period extended, you can do so for an additional minimum fee. We recommend that you study using the AHNCC recommended references. You will receive the test registration information from CNET after your application has been processed. Please read all the materials you receive from them and follow the directions very carefully. Contact the testing center if you have any questions. Candidates have 14 days from the date of their confirmation notification from CNET to register for their examination within that three month window. Once CNET has confirmed your payment, you will be sent an electronic examination permit within five business days. This permit will be emailed to you from CNET's 
test delivery partner, PSI. Please contact CNET if you do not receive the electronic examination permit. That is the responsibility of the candidate. The permit includes a unique candidate ID number and a link to schedule the examination online at the computer-based testing location of your choice. Your testing permit will be good for a period of 90 days. Please notify them within 72 hours if you need to cancel your test date. If you notify them within that period, you will be given the opportunity to reschedule your examination during that three-month window at no additional charge. Once again, please read all the material very carefully that you receive from CNET. Now let's talk a little bit about preparation. There are primary and secondary references. The first primary reference is the AHNCC Core Essentials. This can be found on our website under the Resources page on the page regarding supporting documents. The AHN CC Core Essentials contains the core competencies in the appendix of whichever um, core essentials document, the basic or the advanced, um, depending on the exam level. If you're sitting for the basic level exams, you look at the basic core essentials document. If you're sitting at the advanced level or the APHN level, you look at the advanced core essentials document. The core competencies can be found in either document in the appendices. Why is this important? Because the core competencies are actually what you will be tested on. I strongly suggest you get some recycled paper and you print those core competencies out, once again found in the appendix, and then highlight those that you need to learn more about or study on, that those that you don't feel as comfortable or confident about. The second primary reference is the h &A Scope and Standards of Practice. That can be obtained through a h and a and the third edition is now available. And the last primary reference is the h and CC Practice Examinations. These are examinations have items that are written in the same format as the national certification exams. The items are pulled from the pools that are used to create the examinations. They are all single answer, multiple choice, and once again, they are formatted in the same way that the national certification items are. The other thing about this, um, these practice exams is that they are created so that the blueprint or the core competencies are divided into the domains that you will be tested on for the national examination. So these um, three references are the primary references as you prepare. The secondary references can be found uh, in the handbook. Probably the most common one used for the basic examination is the handbook for holistic nursing practice. Next, determine your primary mode of learning. Is it experiential? Is it auditory or visual? This will help you create your plan plan to study or plan of study. Testing strategies that many use include creating a study plan, sticking with it, tape, taking a preparation course. Some are offered through the American Holistic Nurses Association if you feel that it is needed, or studying with colleagues in small groups. You can also use note cards to keep track of information that's harder to retain and use positive affirmations throughout the house. I know what I need to know to be successful. I'm ready for this exam or examination. I'm gonna do a great job, I'm prepared. Take time to relax and play. This balance is crucial as you prepare for the exam and as you work hard to learn new information, retain it and have easy access to it. Remember, life gets in the way, so plan ahead. This is really important. Don't expect to prepare the week before and feel comfortable um, and prepared as you go into the exam. 
The goal is to feel successful. You've got it. You know what you need to know, and you're going to blow the exam out of the water. Not be stressed. Creating a holistic self-care plan that works for you is really important. Be com compassionate and commit to yourself. Use self-reflection. As you review those competencies, am I comfortable with this? Do I know what this means? Do I need to do more work in this area? Use mindful planning. Use gentle reflection on self as you go through the process and as you progress. Live in the moment. Never give up. You can do it, and you are very much worth it. Nurture all of you as you ready for certification. Believe in yourself. Again, use positive affirmations. Get yourself organized. Use timetables and checklists. Pace yourself, study in blocks, rest, sleep, relax, and remember to take those critical breaks. Prior to the test date, read all the information and materials you receive from CNET. Make sure that you take the license or the federal identification that you used to register for the exam. If you show up with ID that does not perfectly match your name on the registration materials, you will not be allowed in. And again, read all the information. Know where you're going. Schedule your test at the beginning of the testing session. So if you have to cancel, you will have the opportunity to reschedule with no additional cost. Read CNET's materials and give them the warning that they need, the three days of business days, so that you can reschedule, if needed, for no cost, and get enough sleep the night before. The day of the examination, eat a good, healthy meal before your exam. Bring something with you that you can have in your pocket so you can use it to ground yourself and center yourself if it's needed. If a question throws you, stop, pause, take a deep breath, reach down to that pocket, or reach to that thought, center yourself, and if need be, you can go back to that item. And show up early at the testing site. Set your intention, get centered, and take some extra deep, slow breaths to help you relax. You got this. Recertification is every five years. Requirements include an unrestricted RN license, 100 continuing competency hours, or 100 CE hours. They can be acquired in multiple ways, through presentations, publications, through committee work that is holistic nursing or holistic health related. There are multiple activities and ways that you can learn and show your continuing competency. And last but not least, you need a year or 2,000 hours in the last five years of holistic nursing practice. please feel free to contact us at HNCC. We're here for any questions or concerns that you might have. You may look at our website, www.ahncc.org. There's a lot of information out there that may provide further assistance as you prepare. There's also a video library that has a lot of additional information that can be found on the resource page. You can also email us at info at hncc.org. That is I-N-F-O at A-H-N-C-C dot O-R-G. Thank you for taking the time to listen to us today. Please let us know if we can answer any questions or you have any concerns. Have a great day. Bye-bye.